Okay, that worked out okay. I got it for 14 minutes, and it was at 171 megabytes. I was kind of worried I was going to go over. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the, just the basic way an antivirus program works. And so you don't need to understand that to understand what it is I'm doing in the later stages of, of just setting uh, my antivirus up, program up in SUSE. And then I have a few just things you, you should know based on the state of OpenSUSE, the antivirus program, and the different parts of it that, that, that work together to make a complete system. Okay, so um, the first thing is, is that an antivirus program really contains uh, up to three parts. Uh, the first part is just an engine, okay? And that's the thing that has the ability to scan files to see whether the, you know, uh, to see whether parts of those files have unique strings or identifiers that allow the program to identify the file as, as a virus or malware or some, you know, some kind of malware. <coughs> <coughs> but to be able to make this determination, the antivirus program relies upon uh, files called uh, and, uh, definitions where they contain these various signatures in them and so the, the engine will access these definitions and use them as a reference to compare against when they're looking for uh, when they're scanning these virus files to see whether you know and these definition files I'm sure get bigger and bigger as time goes on maybe some of the older viruses might get peeled off as they become irrelevant or less prevalent so there's always that risk but if you were to run your antivirus engine without any, without your in, without your definitions updated you will get a you will get a, a warning on in the, at the command line from the program I'm going to go into it will say your your definitions are so many days old but in general, if that warning didn't exist, it would look like you're doing a scan. You're actually not doing anything. You're just um, having the program touch all these various files, but and comparing the contents of those files with with nothing that, that exists in your definition programs. And then there's a last uh, part of this whole thing, and that is um, uh, a, a part of the program that runs while the operating system runs and it runs in concurrence with the operating system and monitors all the processes that, that take place as they take place and um, if anything suspicious happens or if the virus signature shows up while things are happening then it catches it and, uh, and terminates, terminates at that point. Well, um, Okay, so, so there's three parts. We have a scan from command line, we have real-time scans, and we have virus definitions that, that need to be updated. In general, these are just general things. And if your program requires a license, you have to activate that license. Okay, now I'm going to go into the basic steps to installing Antivir in uh, OpenSUSE 11.3, and I'll make a few comments to start out here. Um, first of all, dealing Dealing with the license key is, is tricky, unexplained, and has changed over time. So, uh, either I'm misremembering or I misidentified this product with another product that, that, that's out there. Um, but I believe that a while back, um, when I installed Antivir from within SUSE, uh, you know, check the boxes off and uh, in in the YAS control center to download and install those programs uh, it, there was one other step it would bring a dialogue up and say hey you have to go to this such and such website give me your email your, your, your first and last name and your email address and they'll email to you a um, license key to activate the program and what you need to do is save that and put it in user live antivir usr slash lab slash antivirus. Those are three different directories. Then once you do that, you build these the program. Otherwise, when you try to run it, it'll just say, uh, this is not licensed. Too bad. Can't do it. The thing with antivir is that their product for personal use is free. And uh, I'm not, this SUSE partition I'm not using for, for business. I'm using the Ubuntu partition. So this is uh, for my personal use. So I am able to do that. 
Okay, then the next thing to know is the documentation that comes with the program, or at least the documentation that I saw that, um, I don't want to lead you down the wrong path, but that was installed with one set of binaries that I, that I went into, I'll go into more detail later, uh, appear to be out of date compared to what I actually needed to do to install the program. Um, the post at the help forum, you might search Google for this anti beer and you might end up at the at some help forum that, that exists and there's some that'll say you can download a license from here, you can download the personal edition from here, but I know at least that, that the license out of date is out of date. And on the second hand I'd rather go to the site that is uh, <laughs> that is shown to be the actual place where you're supposed to download this download this officially than some link in some form, even though it is the um, form owned owned and run by the company that makes the software, I, I'd still rather get it from the page. So, And it's also very hard to find uh, the, the actual download page. Uh, the install script is broken in part. There's some kind of plug-in that won't install because the script assumes that there's a piece of software there that isn't. The graphical user interface is a separate thing from the engine, and that graphical user interface has to be, in this situation, as far as I perceive, has to be installed uh, separately from the other part that you get. And so that brings to mind whether the, the, the graphical user interface is actually in sync with the underlying script, and I'll, I'll get to that. I haven't tested to know whether that's the case. Um, so the package, um, and then of course, just just to point out something probably more academic than than true, because I can't unverify this. Um, sounds goofy, but I I, I can't disprove what I'm going to say. Uh, prove or disprove. Uh, you know, there there is a help command for um, anti beer, and it isn't really apparent, but I'll show you what it is. And again, just like the graphical user interface, the you know the the command line options that are provided in the help that comes up is only as good as it actually reflects the underlying binary, which of course we don't have the source code for. But that's that's you know that's. The company's choice. You know, they're they're allowed. You know, they're allowed to do that. I'm not demanding they release their source code. I'm just just pointing out that you know, if there are other options that aren't reflected in the help file, or the help file is out of sync with the binary, then it won't behave as described in the help file. But I have no reason to think that's the case. But it's just theory. I'm just telling you about that. And then the command is called AV scan. There's a lot of different um, options within that. And I'm going to look at the graphical user interface, at least if it works the way I imagine it's going to, and uh, see whether it is as full featured as the help file. Okay, so I'm going to go into this uh, pretty much right now. Um, okay, so in OpenSUSE, if you were, and I'm just going to tell you what what uh, my experience was, so I don't. Um, it's not going to be as completely hands-on, 100% from scratch, but you should be able to figure out where to go from here. If you if you end up, there's one thing that's misleading about all this. If you end up going into software management, and this, by the way, is a little quicker than it used to be. But still, it's a little bit annoyingly slow. I wish it wasn't that way, and it isn't because I have additional repositories in there just yet. It's still going and it's getting stuff off the SUSE server. If you uh, go up here to the top where it has search, get some gum, so I've probably got the camera everywhere, and you type in virus, you'll see that it's got an MavisD. There, there, are, there are a number of options, by the way, for for how you run your your antivirus programs. Now, I, I've, I've chosen antivir One, because people that are new to, to Linux are going to have a little more comfort in what they're... It doesn't mean it's any better, but they're going to have a little more comfort knowing that 
as good as Antivir works in Windows is as good as it's going to work in Linux because they're using the same virus definition files that I talked about earlier. But anyway, there is something called a Mavis D, and what a Mavis D is, and you don't want it <laughs> for, for this case, we're not talking about an email server here, but a Mavis D is a wrapper that allows the CLAM antivirus program to check emails as they come in if you're running an email server. So you don't want that. You, what you want is the what you would have wanted, sorry, is antivir and possibly antivir GUI. Now what's misleading about that in another way is now the program is called AV Scan, but they got antivir up here. And it used to be called antivir. But if you were to go ahead and install antivir and antivir GUI, it would it would install without a problem. But the problem you would have is that once you try to um, run your program you would say you're not licensed the GUI would come up and you would just say you know, you're, you're not licensed for this product and I think just to get into some technical details something I noticed that may lead to some more clarity to some people um, the antivir program is located under user library antivir and this this file here is the a, it's the, the, the license you have for a year, or it should be the license you have. But also here in the um, in the, the guard program, I remember seeing, here it is, the Avira personal key. Okay, You're not really supposed to open this, but I'm opening it up just to see what it looks like. And there, it looks like, the content looks like the same content that's up here. And the way it used to work is you just put the file right up here and would have that name H B E D V key. And so what's happening what happens is when you go over to that forum to um, download the license key file from that post that was made in two thousand nine from the person that says you can get that from here. It's even an employee of of of, of, of Ira and you, you put it in that subdirectory after you've installed it from from Yast it won't run. The one thing I don't know is if you were actually to rename that key file to um, put it in the, 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 the guard subdirectory and uh, uh, rename it to a Vira personal key or, or, or hbdev key dot key or hbdev underscore key. There's these three folders here. Whether that would allow you to install antivir from from Yast and at least run only the scanner on demand not the um, process mon monitoring part that's a whole other story <laughs> which I'll get to okay so my situation is right now is that I don't have I don't have antivir from from SUSE in there nor do I have antivir GUI I haven't tested antivir GUI. And this is saying that AV Guard need to buy antivir. Nothing provides antivirus guard need to buy antivir GUI. Okay, well we got a problem here because I have the program. Let me explain what, what what I've done so far. I'm gonna try to look and see where I am in this file. How many minutes am I in here? Probably getting close to needing to stop. So I'll stop.